I'm the bad guy? Yeah. Homer's Enemies episode 23 of the 8th season of The Simpsons. With an IMDb rating of 9.3, the episode has been regarded as one of the most beloved Simpsons episodes of all time. It's a topic that has been discussed to death online, and for good reason. Homer's Enemy deals with the subject matter of what would happen if a real person had to deal with Homer Simpson. Frank Grimes is a character that had an incredibly unfortunate and hard upbringing, and he always seems to be down on his uppers in his life. And once he gets a job at the power plant and meets Homer, he never appears to be content with what he has. Homer manages to get a job at the power plant with no previous experience or education. He has a huge house with a loving family, he's met multiple celebrities, he's won a Grammy award and has even been into space. Yet often he's incredibly lazy, extremely selfish, and is straight up incredibly mean spirited to other people for no good reason. And in the case of Frank Grimes, he has to work extremely hard just to obtain a fraction of what Homer has. He was abandoned by his own family at age 4, was blown up in a freak accident, and actually had to work on the side for years just to obtain a nuclear physics degree. And once he gets the job at the power plant, he has to work another job just to get by in his small apartment. Grimes sees all of Homer's achievements in life as completely undeserved and unjustified. He sees it more as dumb luck than anything else. Even the side plot in the episode with Homer's son entails Bart getting a factory for just one dollar, and that was just by complete random chance. Looks like my years of hard work have finally paid off. And yeah, it is a good way to show that sometimes in life you can just get lucky. And besides, while Homer is more quote unquote lucky now, Homer didn't always have a good upbringing. His father was far from the best and his mother left him when he was really young. Homer doesn't often talk about that or complain about it because that's not the type of character Homer is. But of course, Homer is still far from the perfect human being, but his more balanced outlook on life compared to Grimes sets him apart. Is it really Homer's fault that even though he's very deplorable at times, the world around him just seems to often gravitate towards him? Is it Frank Grimes' fault that his years of hard work and suffering amounted to what he perceives as an unjust life? Things aren't always going to be fair in life. It's quite often in the media that you see things being praised that really shouldn't be. There is always going to be a person who is going to have more than what you have. But in a way, that's just life. The people that have more than you in some areas are often deeply unhappy, and they've suffered way more in other aspects. There are many classic examples of the sad lottery winner or movie star, and somebody who understood that life wasn't always fair was the 26th President of the United States. On the 14th of October 1912, Theodore Roosevelt was shot in the chest during a campaign event in Milwaukee. He was shot by a completely delusional saloon keeper called John Schrank. And John Schrank believed that the ghost of the previous president William McKinley was ordering to kill him. Because Roosevelt was a very experienced hunter and anatomist, he knew that because he wasn't coughing up blood, the bullet had not yet reached his lung. So get this, he decided to carry on his speech without any medical attention for 90 minutes. Did Roosevelt deserve to get shot just because he was a former president and had ideas that he believed in? Was it really fair that he was almost murdered by a guy that actually had no hate or real connection towards him? Well, obviously not, but you can see what I'm getting at. Theodore Roosevelt is behind the famous quotes, Comparison is the thief of joy. In life you can't have everything, and if your dreams do come true you'll find yourself always wanting more. And this was the issue with Frank Grimes. While yes, it was very unfortunate in the way that his life started, he did manage to eventually attend university and get a good job. If he just continued to keep his head down a bit, he probably would have ended up just fine. Through Homer Simpson's ability to do well in pretty much anything with little effort, Frank Grimes tries to sabotage Homer by humiliating him publicly to no avail. At this point in the episode, this should be the turning point in the viewer to be against Grimes but the ending brilliantly makes you feel conflicted, even if you know Grimes is probably wrong. Frank Grimes ends up going insane and starts running through the factory claiming that he himself is Homer Simpson. Grimes ends up electrically shocking himself and he ends up dead because of it. At Frank Grimes' funeral, Homer falls asleep and everyone ends up laughing as his casket gets lowered into the ground. It's an extremely dark and funny end to a fantastic episode. 
The incredibly meta and subversive way Homer's enemy tore down everyone's perceived view of the show resulted in viewers being incredibly split on it at the time. Many fans of the show actually ended up resenting Homer Simpson. This really isn't that shocking though. The select pieces of media that have stood the test of time have often been disliked on release, and it's happened constantly throughout the years that media itself has been a thing. And one of the most widely criticisms of media is saying that you've seen it done before. In a way, it's the worst criticism a creator can receive because it often ends up boring. A bad movie can be praised for being so bad that it's good, and a great movie often pushes boundaries and has something new to say. But a mediocre product, however, is just soulless. The biggest stars in the media zeitgeist are often either awful or incredibly likeable. There's normally no in-between. For every PewDiePie and Vsauce, there's always going to be a Boogie2988 just around the corner. But for the millions upon millions of people that try to make it in the industry, most get little to no traction because we've seen their style done to death. It's incredibly hard to balance creating something that is entertaining and innovative at the same time, because often audiences will have a hard time understanding it. So you want a realistic, down-to-earth show that's completely off the wall and swarming with magic robots. Oh, yeah. You kids don't know what you want. That's why you're still kids, because you're stupid. Josh Weinstein, who worked on The Simpsons at the time, stated that many fans just didn't like the episode when it was first broadcast. It was too dark, lacked humour, and Homer was just too mean-spirited. But the issue wasn't that Homer was too mean-spirited. Oh no, he was the same old character. The actual issue was that Frank Grimes was too real of a character to fit in a cartoon world like The Simpsons. In reality though, I think Frank Grimes represents a lot of the naysayers of the show, and he was just too high concept of a character to fit in a world like this for people to accept. The incredibly dark ending was criticised, but in all honesty, Grimes' death gives the whole concept so much more credence. It makes the episode a lot more special too. He was too real of a character to stay in the show for any longer than he did. It's fitting in a way that Grimes' death is shown in a shockingly blunt and realistic way for the show. When you know if that Homer Simpson was the one in that situation, he would have been comedically shocked and just ended up fine. It just shows the difference in attitude between Homer Simpson and Frank Grimes. Homer is a person that wouldn't complain about his life in the same way that Frank did. Homer even found it cool that Grimes lived in an apartment. It really is about perspective, because in some ways Frank Grimes really didn't have it that bad. Grimes was partially modelled after Michael Douglas's character William Foster in the film Falling Down. William Foster is an unemployed man who is estranged from his family, and one day when he gets stuck in traffic he decides to leave his car, and this starts a series of strange encounters for him in the city. Foster often comments about how sardonic life can be at times, and the movie also raises a lot of issues that were happening at the time in America. The film gets absolutely absurd in the way that it portrays Foster's frustrations with the society that he lives in, and even if you know Foster's actions in the film are bad, you sort of feel sorry for him because you can see where he's coming from. The fate of Foster and Grimes are very similar in the end, and due to their strong beliefs of what they think is right, they just don't fit into the world they live in anymore. The Simpsons never really had someone quite like Frank Grimes, and it hasn't really had anyone like it ever since. Flanders, believe it or not, used to be a genuine foil for Homer, and not just a one-note joke that he's a religious nerd. Ned Flanders used to be a friendly, good-hearted person who had significantly more wealth than his neighbour Homer. His faith in Christianity was more to show that he was a person of faith who had good intentions with everything he did. Homer was always desperate to try and outdo Flanders, someone who clearly didn't feel the same tension and animosity. But throughout the years, he just turned into a religious guy who just seemed a little bit out of touch with reality. This example was named as Flanderization, and this is one of the examples that showed that The Simpsons jumped the shark throughout the later seasons. It wasn't just the Principal and the Pauper episode in Season 9 that marked the show's decline. It was practically every other full set of the show's brilliance that got completely ruined. The ruining of Flanders' character was that extreme that the Flanderization itself is now used whenever a character in media has become a shell of their former self. And just like the Frank Grimes episode in Season 8, Flanders himself has also had his own high concept story in which his faith in God is put to the test. In the episode Hurricane Neddy, 
Only Ned's house gets destroyed after a massive hurricane occurs in Springfield. Ned complains to the Lord that he's always been a nice guy and by the book, and he questions if he deserves what's even happened to him. Homer along with the townsfolk of Springfield decide to rebuild his house for him, but they do such a bad job at it that his new house instantly falls apart. Ned has a mental breakdown in similar vein to Grimes's, and he releases his anger and frustration to everyone who tried to help him. He ends up in a mental institution, but is released in the end when he learns that he is allowed to be angry at some things in life. It's a great episode and a brilliant last hurrah to what was once a great character. In my opinion, the last third of Hurricane Neddy isn't nearly as impactful as Homer's enemy is, but the subtext in the rest of the episode is really solid. Both episodes are really similar on the surface, as both characters end up going insane after a series of misfortunes and their blow-ups are both understandable and also too far at the same time. Grimes and Ned are both characters that have a skewed perception on fairness. Grimes believes that hard-working people should be rewarded and lazy people shouldn't be, and Ned believes because of his strong faith in his religion, he shouldn't deserve the extreme things that happen to him. Before Ned's house gets destroyed, Marge prays to God in hopes that he will spare their own home, and specifically comments that they will share the word of God around to their friends. The Simpsons family are regularly shown to go to church, but it seems like they go more for the community side of things. Pretty much everyone else in the town attends service, so why shouldn't they? Like some other quote-unquote religious people, however, they seldom actually practice the religion and only know it on a surface level. They are not the best at following the Christian faith, not by a long shot. Homer even ends up mocking God, as when the hurricane ends, Homer states that God fell for Marge's lies in her prayer. Marge never ends up spreading the word of God like she claimed that she was going to, so the Simpsons get off scot-free for doing nothing. Ned's house, which is right next door however, gets absolutely obliterated by the hurricane, so it's crystal clear what the writers were intending with this meaning. It just reinforces the fact that what we perceive as fair just doesn't matter to the randomness of the universe. It also questions why Ned even follows the religion so closely, as in some ways it's just a frivolous exercise to do so. It's a faith rather than an absolute. Nobody can prove actually what happens when we die. And with the sheer amount of religions out there, people who turn to faith can only hope that their religion is the true religion. Because of course, they dedicated their whole life to it. The idea of theodicy has been closely linked to the themes in this episode. In Christianity, God is believed to be an all-powerful, all-knowing, and in general a good being. But in his world, plenty of unjust things happen all the time on a regular basis. Why would such an ever-loving God not stop bad things from happening when he has the ability to? This notion is at the forefront of the scene where Ned calls out to God, as it's kind of unfair for him that Homer as usual just gets off scot-free. It's a common occurrence in The Simpsons that Homer is sort of able to do whatever he wants. Sure he faces hardship and his own issues, but it is safe to say that Homer has had quite an eventful life to say the least. And it's mocked the most in Homer's Enemy where Homer shows Frank Grimes all of his achievements. It kind of gets a bit ridiculous, and his family sort of side with Frank Grimes. But how did this series manage to keep Homer so likeable? The Frank Grimes character type has never been a mainstay in The Simpsons, and Josh Weinstein actually later regretted killing off the character after just one episode. The grumpy character has been an extremely prominent figure, especially in animated media. They appear in many shows and movies, and they're often the more cynical version of the main character. The character of Squidward Tentacles is one of the most well-known examples of this. Squidward is one of the main characters in the Nickelodeon animated cartoon series Spongebob Squarepants, and he's regularly annoyed by Spongebob himself. Apart from being both yellow, Spongebob is actually quite a similar character to Homer Simpson. They are both naive and childish at times, and Spongebob's optimism and constant likability set them clearly apart. And that's why the show needed a Squidward. It needed a more flawed and realistic character in the show to combat how extreme Spongebob's personality is. But Squidward is more likeable than Grimes because he knows when things go too far. Most of the best Spongebob episodes have Squidward as one of the main characters in them, and that's because he was the perfect opposite of Spongebob and also that enough episodes were made about him to develop his character. 
The characters in The Simpsons seem less likely to react to the absurd scenarios compared to other shows. The show has a vast array of characters and they do seem to throw Homer a bone more than they really should. If a crazy person comes into town with a new idea, they're much more likely to just go with the flow on it. And I think it's because the other characters were a bit crazy too. And that is why I think that The Simpsons could get away without having a main grumpy character. Because in the world of Simpsons, the voice of reason is often not there at all. The Simpsons could have had Frank Grimes become a more recurring character. They could have potentially made more in-depth episodes to fully flesh out his issues. But it doesn't really matter now. The golden age of the show is done, and the current writers wouldn't be able to make it work anyway. And besides, Frank Grimes is dead. Would Homer's enemy be even close to as iconic as it is now if Grimes didn't die at the end? I don't think so. It still would have made a great episode for sure, but I think it says a lot that a character with such little screen time ended up making such a huge impact. Former Simpsons executive producer Mike Reese stated how much he hated the episode, and it's actually one of his most least favourites in the whole of the show saying that the discussion of Homer's morality has been done much better in later episodes, so the Grimes episode stands out as a painful watch. This was more agreed on at the time, as Josh Weinstein stated that the episode involves a lot of sharp observational humour that a lot of fans just didn't get. He also stated that there's a generational gap within the viewers, as Homer's enemy only really became a fan favourite years later. I personally side much more with Josh Weinstein, as I disagree with Mike Reese's point that they explored Homer better in later episodes. If anything, it reinforces that it was necessary for Frank Grimes to die. It was better in a way that the truly last great season of The Simpsons had some of the most out there and more interesting episodes and characters. Well, sadly, the world isn't fair. There will inevitably always be someone who slips through the cracks. You could be having the best or worst life you could ever imagine. But something could always change in an instant. It's just how the world works. But if there's anything that I've learned from Homer Simpson, Ned Flanders, Frank Grimes, Spongebob, Squidward, Foster, or even Theodore Roosevelt, it's that it's up to you on how you deal with the absurdity and randomness of life. Just have fun, guys. Thanks for watching. It's junk. First class junk. And